Um, the second issue is quality. Remember, how do we ensure we get quality? And quality means different things to a different, pe different people, right? So if you are creating translation, uh, education, training materials, you're looking at, okay, is this really the stuff that is going to educate my workforce or my customers or, or uh, my partners if it's an extranet? If you're talking to um, solving problems, field, operation manuals, servicing planes, product instructions, is my content, does it do the job? Does it really address what's required? If you are into the marketing world, you know, you can ask yourself, is this content going to help spur the imagination? If you're doing a filing, is it really ticking the boxes of, of the filing requirements, the regulatory requirement? Or if you're in life sciences or you're creating, I don't know, say, uh, medical labeling, you're going to be asking, is, is this the right label? Does it say everything it needs to say, by the way? It's what is regulated, and is it say it right, and is this correct in every language? But there is also more to, to, to quality than, than this. So it's going to be looking about, is it that, that relevance, right? Is it really what we need? Then the second thing we're going to talk about, is it consistent, right? Is it you getting that content that you're creating is consistent across uh, different areas? And then ultimately, it's around the standards. So I'm going to use an example to talk about relevance. And it's actually quite uh, an interesting uh, one. Now, those of you who are not very, very keen cyclists, you wouldn't know this product, Swift. You would know the American version of it called Peloton, right? Any avid Peloton users here? OK. All right, so they're just pulling a really great IPO. And I think there's a lot of potential new customers here. Um, so basically, this is about gamifying cycling indoors, right, to the extreme. Uh, now, so if it's coming up, they've got, I'm not going to enter into the debate, I can do it over a coffee, uh, one versus the other. But they, they really wanted to get a global market. They really wanted to get a global audience. And what a better place to do that than the two the fans, right? Uh, and so they sort of figure out, and they always, in advertising, it's always like that. You know the Tour de France is always in July, but you're always ready with the material that you need the third week of June, right? It's like the Olympics, it's every four years, and we always know when the Olympics hit, but it's always a last minute rush. So the same happened here. We needed to do, help the team not produce the campaign itself, but really make the campaign relevant. We needed to do nine markets in two weeks. We needed to clear advertising standards in some countries. And even in a country like Russia, where they don't have a company, we had to go and take it all the way down to drive that campaign. So let me just roll a video, and then I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Get the app that turns indoor training into a game. Zwift позволяет ехать куда угодно, днем и ночью. no rider to ishoni hashiru. Karetomo. Wait, is that Chi? Stop. Is that Geraint? This is interval workouts. Power online заезды добавляют азарта. И азарт. Оно сикара тузукерареру. Кекка мо дэру. Fun is results. Fun is fast. Unfortunately, I don't think we came up with that tagline of fun is fast. I absolutely love it. I wish I could come up with it. Um, anyway. What's so interesting about this? And now those of you, you might need a little bit of explaining, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of transcreation of the background, right? Um, so you take Geraint Thomas, right? He won the last two, the, France, the one before last, he didn't win this last one. Uh, he went to Colombia for the first time. But before that, I think British drivers have won six out of the last seven to the France. So that would make you think that the Brits own the sport. Actually, they don't. Never won one in 100 years. But it so happens, all of a sudden, British drivers, Bradley Wiggins, Chris Froome, and Geraint, started winning, right? So the first one got a knighthood, the other two didn't, but that's a different matter. Um, but obviously, these guys have become rock stars in the UK, right? Everybody knows them, right? I think, uh, remember, Bradley Wiggins even got to do the opening of the Olympic Games in London. And he goes to that level of they are really now like rock stars. Jermaine Thomas happens to be from Wales. So if you are a rock star in the UK, in Wales, you are the emperor. <laughs> so everybody knows him as G. Right? So when you put in this in England, 
You don't do, this is Jerome Thomas, because that looks silly. You just have to be trendy and say, it's that G. Now, if you put that in Russian, it doesn't do it. So in Russian, you put the whole name. And if you put it in good old formal Japanese, he is Jerome Thomas son. Right? Just a little example to demonstrate how you can do a great job creating a great product, gamify, you can spend a lot of money, you can get it right, you can sign up G to write for you in your commercials. If then you just screw it up in the last mile, it's not cool. So brand consistency, that matters. It really matters. And this is the other problem that you guys are telling us about. Your quality, but yet in the way of brand consistency. How do you help us? How can we help you keep your brand consistent? Yes, this is an example. Do you, some of you manage multilingual websites. Can we help you blueprint them with Tritium so that they actually look the same? Uh, but you can adapt some parts of the real estate. Can we help you create the content? Can we help you rewrite the content, transcreate the content, manage that content? And we've got a number of offerings and a growing number of offerings and partnerships that are directed to help you guys do that in your last mile as you reach that. So this is relevant. The second one was standards. And I'm really pleased to be doing more and more and more with standards because not everything is about marketing. Some of you work in extremely standard-centric, heavily regulated industries. Some of you cannot afford to think about making it trendy. You've got to make it right. And there are standards in the industry that are very complex, that all they do is ensure that it's right. It's the right content, it's created right from inception down to production, and if you're doing some aerospace stuff, you don't care if it's trendy. It has to work. If you're in a mission, it has to be perfect. So the best standard for that is s 1000 ding. Anybody who wants to look at the standard, you probably have to take two years off. I mean, it's a hell of a long book, right? When we have a leading product uh, in the company, Contenta, that implements this, that helps some of you guys in the audience uh, to produce millions and millions of pages a month, documents, and make sure that this very complex, valuable uh, industry takes. So I'm really pleased to, to also announce for the first time we have a separate track at SDL Connect for Aerospace and Defense. And um, those of you, the first time that are here, that are joining for that track, welcome. And uh, hopefully you enjoy the whole experience. The next one is accessibility. And we talked a little bit about it last year. Uh, and yes, we are regulated, many of you are regulated to provide accessibility. But I think it's also the right thing to do, right? We all have employees, customers, partners, people who are in our value creation chain who are disabled. We're all getting a little bit older, and the workforces are getting a little bit older. So this is an investment worth making. And whether you want to understand and do a consulting piece on your content to assess the accessibility, whether you're ticking the right boxes, whether you need to implement something, I want you to think about that this is another part of global understanding and communication that we can help you with uh, in SDL. And I believe this is going to be a very important and a very right thing to do going forward. So this is going to take me now to the last piece of content. Right, which is fragmentation. And fragmentation really is about, well, this is a manual process, and you've got a lot of it, and you've got a lot of sponsors who create, sort of sponsor project contents, people, a lot of people generating content, and it's in different places. You've got multiple versions there in different hubs. How do you find it? The reality is content is probably the most siloed thing in an enterprise. It's quite a scary thought, and it's all growing at scale, and the machine's going to have to do a lot, and you're going to have to translate it. So, so we are working on a vision and on a set of solutions to really remove the relevance of silos. Silos will disappear. I think you're going to have a lot of CIOs, and you will know a few in your companies who have that vision of creating the single content store, and everyone is going to migrate to that single content store. They will probably be retired 
before they retire the silo system. So that's not the way to go about it. The way to go about it is putting some intelligence, putting something on top that makes those silos less problematic. And that's what we're trying to work on. That's the sort of the next, the next jump. How are you able to go and deliver any of the content pieces, find them, deliver them in the right way, and making sure that all of that can work across multiple repositories, right? Not a single repository. You can deliver a unified, integrated experience. And we've been doing quite a lot of work here. You've seen isolated themes over the year, right? We brought Trillion DX to give you that dynamic delivery, to give us the capability to mash up marketing content with services content and deliver a very cool experience, right? We can do headless work. We've been doing a lot of work on, on um, getting now a better integration framework. You might have seen an announcement we did last week on Trillion Sites 9.1 that builds a new, totally new intelligent, intelligent framework. But the area where I have been getting an earful from you over the last couple of years was can we do better at content creation? And we, we took it on and uh, I think we're in a good place. But I'm going to let my colleague Chip to come on stage and show you why we think we're in a good place. And by the way, he's great. And he doesn't look the way he looks because we're giving him a hard time with this, right? He's just one of the most seasoned people in structured content management in the industry and a privilege to have him in the company. Thank you, sir. Well, good morning, everybody. That was a nice introduction. Thank you, Adolfo. Um, so Adolfo's right. Uh, many of you have been very successful with structured authoring, moving it in. We realize the investments it takes to unify some of the content strategies. So really what we're talking about here are new capabilities available with Trading Docs 14, the new release, to address subject matter experts. In this view right now, I'm a reviewer, and I have the ability to come in and add comments to my content in a basic standard web browser. And in this example, Rachel is adding in comments regarding a new sales guide that we're updating for a new product release. We also heard from many of you that you need to be able to track these comments. So there's metadata associated with the status of them. You also notice there was the ability to track the changes, what suggestions we're making for this particular content. So this is available as a reviewer mode called uh, draft space and review space, collective spaces. The exciting part for us is, is the ability to provide this in the easy to use but powerful type capabilities. What's really exciting for me is as we start to look at this, we also have the ability to keep comments private and then make them public. And once we make them public, I'm able to go and now change roles to an SME author. Many of you in the audience are authors today. Perhaps you use structured authoring or other Microsoft Word or other tools. Draft Space is our new application that now Sarah can go in and curate those comments and she has the privilege to actually make the changes in the content in the left-hand side. Now this is structured content. So there's tagging and the metadata and the intelligent content we've been talking about this morning are very much a part of this. But Sarah now can interact with her colleague Rachel and Chip and others when they're making these updates in real time. She also has the ability to go in and accept or reject these comments and have a full audit trail and feedback, which we've heard is very important uh, from our customers and so forth. And then finally, Rachel gets that information back about what's coming on um, because she can also filter the comments and accept and make the standards as doing and uh, request the final documentation. Also very important is the ability to add in reuse. So Sarah has the ability to go in and add a topic that already was previously written into her outline view. So it's a very easy to use forum, but many of you have taken advantage of reuse We've now made it more available to SMEs who can easily go in and add that into their structure of their content. So next, what Sarah needs to be able to do is actually uh, curate that content and also now um, save it back to the repository. So 
if you notice in the upper left corner, this topic is unlocked to her. So DraftSpace now allows her to make changes and updates in that content. She also made a structural change, changing notice. And now she also has the ability to add in content reuse. So she can add in a standard statement about figures and approximability and merge those all back into the final content. The last thing she can do is then save that back to the repository as well. So all very easy action type items that can be easy to learn from an SME standpoint. So great, well thank you very much. All right, that's really exciting stuff. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So you can see how all of these things are starting to come together, right? The, the, the delivery capability, the understanding of the content when it exists, but also the, that collaborative content creation. And sometimes, for a long time, a lot of the most valuable content will be created by really subject matters, and they've got to be able to collaborate and, and be able to do that. So really, really excited. But if you sort of take a little bit of a, this is, I'm, I'm really excited about this, by the way. Because if you take a little bit of a step back and, and you think about some of this thing we're talking about content, a lot of these things have really been traditionally about marketing content, product documentation. I'm not belittling that. That is really important. But what we're seeing now is that those problems are also becoming really important in the business systems world. Right? It's not about doing a content mashup of pages, of course, but it's been able to do a presentation of information that is business systems originated and deliver a, sin a single view of an orchestrated experience out of all your bus business critical systems and build that portal for business critical information. Think about that, whether you are doing that for your employees to empower them so that they don't have to go and worry about that. You can orchestrate an experience and a set of content and integrations that are relevant to your employees. Think about if you work with a number of partners or affiliates and you have an extra net and you want to give them that sort of all that business content that you've got or you want to provide some of that to your own customers. So this is a really innovative way of looking at content. And by the way, the content is also multilingual, it also needs to be translated, it's originated in different parts of the world. So language is a really important part of it. So I would like to um, ask a visionary in the industry and a customer of ours on stage to help us talk about this sort of business um, content integration framework. So please join me in welcoming Rob from Deloitte onto the stage, please. hot, isn't it? It is, and very bright. Uh, and very bright. Are you talking about the stage or are you talking about the idea? Oh, the ideas, of course. <laughs> Good. So, so, um, so what content? So first of all, actually, does any of this resonate with you? It all resonates, but I think I've determined my new source of, of success, how I'm going to measure it, is if people consume our content and feel like they're eating a piece of chocolate. Yes. That is my yes. key takeaway. Yeah, I, yeah, how are we going to build KPIs for that? That's going to be a, an interesting one. Um, right, so you, what challenges were and are you or you think you'll be facing with content at Deloitte? So if you think of Deloitte <clears throat> as an auditing firm, we really sit at the intersection of three different sets of regulated content. We have an independent standard setter that sets rules that companies like you use to tell your shareholders if you've made money or lost money. We have account uh, auditing standards that we are subject to, that we come in and we look at your financial statements and say, do they comply with the rules that the standards that are set? And then you have a regulator who sits on top of you that says, have you presented that fairly to the outside world? And our job is really to say, how do we take those three different sets of content? How do we incorporate them into the tools and the methodology that we give our professionals when they come in to audit a company like SDL? Although, to be clear, if there's any independence police here, we're not your auditor. Um, how do we make Thoughtware available to you, a client, so that you actually know how to interpret those rules? 
and how do we ultimately build eminence externally? So we really sit at the intersection of three different sets of regulatory content and really incorporating that into the day-to-day -day job of our professionals and making it available to our clients. Complex. Yes. <laughs> how much technology do you use to solve that? So obviously you're gonna solve services and people, but what is the role of technology here for you? So we are in the midst of a whole digital transformation. Um, obviously, content management system is key. So a big part of what we're looking to do is actually just replace our content management system. But then there's other aspects of it too, right? So if you think of our clients, they're multinational clients. So it's not uncommon for a client to go and do an acquisition tomorrow in Brazil. And all the purchase documents are in Portuguese. And they give them to our engagement team and they say, I'd really like your thoughts on what do I need to be thinking about from an accounting perspective, from an auditing perspective. So one of the things we're looking at, and I'm very eager to get deployed, is machine translation so that our engagement teams have a secure portal where they don't have to worry about the content getting out into the hands it shouldn't be getting into and translating it into English so that they can actually help their client understand the ramifications of what they did. Um, some of it is contextualization. We have a ton of content out there, <clears throat> excuse me, for our clients, for our professionals. We know what our professionals are doing. We know what step they're at in the audit. How do we eliminate the noise of the, the thousands and thousands of pages of content and just deliver the right content to them at the right time that's relevant to what they're doing? And then um, we have three different regulators out there. They change their content on a regular basis. We have hundreds of thousands of pages that hinge off of that regulatory content. How do we keep track of the changes that are taking place at the regulator and flow that through to all of our interpretive content, our methodology, our tools in a well-controlled way so that we know that we're ultimately delivering the right stuff to our clients, to our professionals? And then the last is um, a lot of our content is produced at the center. It's produced typically in English, and it has to be deployed globally. So how do we ultimately translate in a, I think of translation as two different levels, but when, when we're translating our methodology, how do we do something that we're comfortable is incredibly high quality and get it deployed and integrated directly into our content management system so that all of our professionals around the globe have what they need to do their job in their native language. Excellent. Um, what about com compliance? I mean, you are in the compliance business, so all of this compliant content. Com compliance is our life. Is there such a thing as compliant <coughs> content in the compliant industry <laughs> through compliance? So, so we, you know, in all honesty, we are a regulated profession, right? So it's not uncommon for our regulator to come in and say to us, okay, this is what the regulation says. This is what your methodology says. How did you get from here to here? And really, a large part of our process right now, a large part of our transformation is how do we leverage the tools that we have today that we didn't have 15 years ago to really reduce the manual effort that's required to map our regulations to our content to make sure that we're keeping track of, of that we have the right content out there. The other thing that we have to deal with is we audit our clients on annual years that begin on different dates for different clients. Not everyone's a 1231 year end. So at any point in time, we could have three different sets of rules outstanding. Um, one set of rules that's applicable to a 1231 year end, one set of rules that's applicable to a June 30 year end. Uh, and how do we keep all of that out there and make sure we're getting the right content to the right people? And so from a compliance standpoint, a huge part of our effort is really making sure that what we do doesn't just simplify the life of our content producers, um, but that ultimately it complies with the, what the regulations are. Thank you. So I'd like to thank you for being here, agreeing to share your thoughts here. But I'd also like to thank you for helping us with some of your leading thoughts and helping us drive these this products and these capabilities forward. And I think there's a lot of people in the audience who are now going to start thinking about more than pages, social, and documents. What you guys are doing is remarkable. Well done. And thank, thank you. you.